less serious forms of clergy sexual misconduct. Um, they do so in incredibly foolish ways, you know, such as uh, falsely accusing me of the criminal act of blasphemous libel and legal bullying that seeks to intimidate me into removing blog posts that tell the truth about uh, pedophilia and rape committed by Unitarian Universalist ministers. So we have some people uh, entering the church here, um, but not that many really. I haven't seen a whole bunch uh, showing up for this uh, cedar dinner. And when I say cedar, I mean S-E-D-E-R. You know, this is the, the Passover, you know, the Last Supper kind of uh, dinner. Um, so, you know, unfortunately, Unitarian Universalists do a terrible, terrible, terrible job of dealing responsibly with internal injustices, abuses, and hypocrisy. If Unitarian Universalists responded to my protest by dealing properly with the issues I'm protesting against, well, I wouldn't have to protest anymore. But no, instead of dealing responsibly with uh, their clergy misconduct problems and other problems, they instead just do you know, what they can to uh, try and silence me, try and hide my protest, and try and prevent me from protesting, and so on. Um, you know, I've been uh, banned from all uh, Unitarian Universalist Association uh, controlled uh, email listers for over a decade now because they want to keep things hidden there, and uh, I'm uh, routinely censored and suppressed by uh, Unitarian Universalists on Facebook and Twitter and, and so on. Um, so yeah, they're really more concerned with covering up and hiding their problems than, uh, than actually working properly to deal with them. And a clear indication of this is the fact that uh, there is no appeal uh, process for complainants. Uh, people who complain about clergy misconduct, whether it's sexual or non-sexual, very often have their complaints just dismissed out of hand by the Unitarian Universalist Association. They come up with all kinds of excuses for pretending the uh, minister didn't, any, didn't do anything wrong, you know. And then they try to silence the uh, complainants. Well, what's interesting is that there's no way for yeah go in and enjoy the hypocrisy sir enjoy it <laughs> yes <laughs> i'm not being mean i'm telling the truth about it well your mom's not paying attention <laughs> your mom should uh engage in a free and responsible search for the truth and meaning of my protest instead of pretending I'm being mean to the church. So uh, <laughs> this little kid, probably like five or six years old, <clears throat> says, why are you being mean to the church? Well, you know, maybe it is mean protesting against Unitarian Universalist uh, child sex abuse, but it's interesting because, uh, you know, unfortunately, uh, Unitarian Universalist ministers, some of them, are guilty of uh, abusing very young children. So as far as I'm concerned, uh, by calling attention to this issue and calling attention to the cover-up and the denial and the refusal to hold people responsible, um, I'm doing something that's uh, pretty good. And it happens to be Good Friday, so I guess this is my good deed for Good Friday and far from uh, mean. Um, you know, what really is mean is uh, abusing children. That's mean. Sexually abusing children, raping children, uh, luring children away from their families in India with promises of a better life in America and then repeatedly raping them as uh, Reverend Mac Wallace Mitchell did is pretty darn mean. Um, raping uh, preteen girls, including a female family member, is pretty mean. I'd say that's mean. But protesting against these things and uh, protesting against the attempts to conceal these things 
in my books is not mean. Um, so, you know, the poor little kid, you know, basically brainwashed by her mother, uh, her mother who doesn't want to look into the facts and uh, deal responsibly with uh, what really goes on in the Unitarian Universalist uh, religious community. Um, you know, it's a huge amount of psychological denial and uh, willful ignorance. We saw a pretty good example of that uh, earlier when the young man just said loudly, you know, I'm going to go in and enjoy myself. In other words, like, I don't give a shit about your protests. I don't care what you're protesting about. Well, that's uh, willful ignorance and psychological denial. If the guy had any sense at all, he'd realize that uh, I'm protesting against some very, very serious problems with the larger Unitarian Universalist religious community and also the church locally. Now, I'm not saying the church locally has any pedophiles or rapists and so on, but what the church locally has done is that it's uh, tried to hide these things. It tried to shut down my protest. Uh, um, you know, in trying to shut down my protest against these issues, well, it's helping to hide them. So it's, it's uh, basically aiding and abetting and directly participating in the uh, Unitarian Universalist religious communities, uh, you know, cover up and denial of uh, clergy sexual abuse of all kinds. Uh, uh, I mean, it's not just rape and pedophilia. Those are the worst forms of it. And I suppose there may be a few other especially scurrilous uh, forms of clergy sexual misconduct, but a lot of Unitarian Universalist clergy misconduct is, is not criminal per se. It's, it's ministers using their congregations as harems, you know, like basically having multiple relationships with uh, you know, members of the congregation, uh, having affairs, you know, with married uh, members of the congregation. Uh, there's plenty of cases like that, some very prominent ones. Um, so, you know, it's not all pedophilia and rape by any means, but if you broaden it out to the, you know, other less serious forms of clergy sexual misconduct, um, which can even just include, you know, making uh, unwanted sexual advances and sexual harassment and so on, um, then there's literally uh, hundreds of Unitarian Universalist uh, Hello. Uh, <clears throat> hundreds of Unitarian Universalist churches that are affected by one form of clergy sexual misconduct or another. Um, a group of uh, Unitarian Universalist uh, interim ministers uh, once started counting how many Unitarian Universalist churches they knew of had uh, had a you know documented case of uh, clergy sexual misconduct. In other words, a case where a minister was uh, actually accused and so on. Good day, sir. <coughs> so uh, they started counting, and when they got to 400, which is almost 40 percent of Unitarian Universalist congregations, because there's only about a thousand or so Unitarian Universalist congregations in North America. Um, they, uh, they, uh, stopped counting. Thanks, sir. <laughs> yeah, somebody's got to do it. <laughs> so I just got a positive, uh, response from a member of the public after he saw my picket signs. He didn't stop to have a chat to find out more about it, but he saw the picket signs and from the look of things, he, he was, uh, being supportive. Um, so anyhow, yeah, we're coming up for the end of the first half hour of protesting. Um, but, uh, yeah, uh, essentially, uh, you know, the Unitarian Universalist Association claims to have about a thousand and fifty or so, or I think that has fallen down to around a thousand and thirty-seven or so congregations in North America, mostly one or two uh, out elsewhere, like the Philippines and so on. But essentially, the vast majority are North American, a few Canadian ones, uh, mostly in the United States. Um, they claim to have around, as I said, you know, at, at this point in time, around 1,037 congregations. Um, and in real terms, they've got less because a lot of those congregations 
basically don't exist anymore in any real sense, um, or they're not affiliated with the UUA anymore. You know, if you removed the ones that uh, aren't officially re affiliated, there's actually under a thousand. So yeah. you're right, sir. I agree with you. Hey, it's you know what? It's a unique honor and privilege to be accused of blasphemy in the 21st century. Yeah, I, 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 I agree with you. I agree with you. It's, uh, I'm enjoying it. Eaten, but what can we do? You know? Well, you can protest. I mean, you don't have to, but I, I, I'm doing it. So you're, 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 uh, I got this. I got this covered. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so this guy's calling the uh, Unitarian Church of Montreal Church of Satan. Um, I'm just quoting the guy there. I didn't say that. <laughs> But, uh, you know, it's funny because in the Bible, uh, uh, Satan, amongst other things, is described as the prince of lies. And if there's a church that doesn't, uh, you know, I mean, a lot of churches lie, but, but this one repeatedly lies, lies through its teeth time and time again. Um, so in that sense, uh, if nothing else, I think uh, it's not unreasonable to, uh, to use that term. Although I will repeat that this is the other guy's words, not mine. But I'm, I'm not uh, not entirely disagreeing with the guy at all. I think, uh, in the broader sense, it's uh, true enough. So, uh, so anyhow, um, and it's, it's interesting because that whole term, of course, is very controversial. Um, but you know, even in the the Bible. Uh, well, I'm not going to take it any further, but, but there's some interesting biblical references as far as that goes. Put it that way. Um, and we shall uh, have a look at the time. Yeah, we're just about done. Got about 40 to 50 seconds of recording time left on the first uh, half hour. So I'm just going to let the time run out. And uh, then I will probably just take a little break of a minute or two of filming just to let the sensor cool down. And then we'll start another half-hour uh, segment of video. And then we'll decide how long we want to go. I'm not saying I'm going to go for the full half-hour, because I think most of the people are already in there and so on. But uh, we'll protest for another 15 minutes or so.